Here we go on question two. Uh, we've got a concert. We've got a rate function. Uh, people are coming into the auditorium. Um, it's measured in people per hour. And it's like a velocity. You know, we've got a speed at which people are coming in. No one's in the auditorium when we start watching at time zero. Um, and at uh, time equals two, the concert begins. So we want to know how many people are in the auditorium when the concert begins. And you can well imagine the situation. Uh, the number is accumulating. Yeah, it's the accumulation function at work here uh, between when the doors open and when the concert begins. And we're going to use our rate function, our velocity, our uh, people per minute. We're going to accumulate all that for those uh, two hours and make a calculation. So uh, that's what you need to uh, write down. Now you need to use the calculator with the function. And uh, I've gone off and done that ahead of time. So let me uh, slide it up here. Let's uh, take a look at it. It's a rather simple calculation, right? So we're uh, interested in these 980 people. So what I've got written on the board is what you would have written on your, calc on your paper. Um, the, what's what you put into the calculator, the specifics, you certainly could put that down on your paper, but it's uh, simpler, I think, just to put R of T down because it's defined as that. In this next part, we're asked to find the time uh, when the number of people entering is at a maximum, and uh, that implies that we're going to take and find when the derivative, uh, what its critical points are. So we're going to say, when does that derivative equal zero, or when is it undefined? And um, because it's a, a polynomial function, it's always going to be defined. Uh, its derivatives are going to be defined. So uh, it, it's really nothing we have to worry about for this particular function. We just have to find where its derivative equals zero. So let's use uh, the calculator for that. I don't know how used to uh, the calculator you are. If you use it for derivatives, it's there on the operations menu on the lower left. And uh, I'm going to use it to find the derivative of R of t. So I'm going to ask it to find the derivative of uh, what they've described as that rate function. And uh, when we throw that uh, command up, it has that little box like it's looking for something. It's actually looking for a number. If you don't put one or two or three in for the first, second, or third derivative, it will assume the first derivative. So I just throw that up there. I put my function in that I want to take the derivative of, and it very dutifully finds it for me. Now I want that answer. I want it set to zero. So I say uh, solve. And rather than type that answer in, I just type ANS and let the calculator put it in for me. ANS equals zero uh, for T, comma T. And so if I do that and press enter, lo and behold, the calculator will uh, put in uh, the answer from the previous step, uh, set it to zero, and tell me where that is. Now, I didn't particularly care for it as a, as a fraction, so I hit it again, um, and uh, this time I told it, uh, you know, the control equals so that I got those decimal approximations. And so uh, the moments, uh, clearly we can see in the function itself for the derivative that zero is one of the zeros. The other one occurs at 1.36296. And uh, so I need to evaluate for those uh, three moments. And um, I went off and did that with the calculator, again, maybe in a way uh, that you're not, you don't. Um, I took the function. Um, I planted it in my calculator. I actually copied it and uh, wasted a step because I, I just pressed equal here, and it gave it to me right back. But then what I wanted to do with it after I copied it was to put um, such that that uh, symbol that's right underneath the uh, control key up at the top. Um, I put a such that t equals zero, and of course it gave me zero back. 
And then I said uh, such that t equals, remember this was the other criti another critical point, and I got this back, and then the end point was 120. And so these uh, three answers are a 0, 120, and uh, approximately 855 at uh, uh, that time 1.36296. So uh, making sure that we're answering the question. Um, they say in the question, find the time uh, at which the number of people entering the auditorium is at a maximum and justify your answer. Well, I'd say uh, uh, critical points, uh, check critical, and endpoints. I would record what R of 0, um, R of, uh, what was it, 1 point, we had it here not too long ago, right? 1.36296 and then uh, R of 2. Um, this is what I would be writing on my paper to get full credit. And of course this one was 0 and this one was 120. And we said this one was about 855. And then I'd write a conclusion and I'd say therefore at uh, time equals 1.363 or 1.362, uh, the number, and uh, I go back to my question to get the uh, exact wording, uh, find the time at which the rate of people entering the auditorium is at a max, uh, at time the number of people entering is at a max. Very good. Part C, I can't 